Good morning. Good to see you at the Lord's house for our worship this morning. The order of service is printed for you in the service folder that you received when you came in. We continue to use the, uh, the, the post service for the new hymnal, so just be aware of those uh, subtle changes. Uh, watch carefully for when there's music and when there's not music. Offering comes after the prayer of the church. We are celebrating our Lord's Supper today, so those who are communing, please take the opportunity to uh, take the card from the back of the pew in front of you and fill that out. Our opening hymn is in the hymnal number 226. To your temple I draw near. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment, both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his holy life and innocent death. Trusting in him, I pray. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as he called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. That your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. God speaks to us in his word. Our first reading from the Old Testament book of Ezekiel, chapter 33. As for you, son of man, I have appointed you to be a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you are to warn them from me. When I say to a wicked man, wicked man, you shall surely die. If you do not speak to warn the wicked man against his way, that wicked man will die because of his guilt, but I will also hold you responsible for his blood. But if you do warn the wicked man to turn from his way and he does not turn from his way, he will die because of his guilt, but you will have saved your life. So son of man, so you son of man, say this to the house of Israel, this is what you are saying. Certainly our rebellions and our transgressions weigh upon us, and because of them we are rotting away. How then can we live? Say to them, as surely as I live, declares the Lord God, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Instead, I take pleasure if the wicked turn from their way and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways. For why should you die, O house of Israel? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from Galatians chapter 2. But when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face, because he was clearly wrong. For before, some people came from James. He ate with the Gentiles. But when those people came, he drew back and separated himself, because he feared those from the circumcision group. And the rest of the Jews joined him in his hypocrisy, with the result that even Barnabas was carried away by their hypocrisy. When I saw that they were not acting according to the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas in front of all of them, If you, a Jew, live like the Gentiles and not like the Jews, why do you compel the Gentiles to live like the Jews? We are Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners. We know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. So we also believed in Christ Jesus that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law, because no one will be justified by the works of the law. But if, while seeking to be justified in Christ, we, all, we ourselves were also found to be sinners, then is Christ a servant of sin? Certainly not. In fact, if I build up again those things that I destroyed, I bring on myself the judgment of being a lawbreaker. Indeed, through the law I died to the law that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I am now living in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not regard the grace of God as nothing. As a matter of fact, if righteousness is through the law, then Christ died for nothing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 18, the sermon text for the, for the morning. Jesus teaches us, if your brother sins against you, go and show him his sin just between the two of you. If he listens to you, you have regained your brother. 
But if he will not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as an unbeliever or a tax collector. Amen, I tell you. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Amen, I tell you again. If two of you agree, two of you on earth agree to ask for anything, it will be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. In fact, where two or three have gathered together in my name, there I am among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated. The hymn of the day is number 304 in the hymnal, Jesus Sinners Does Receive. We sing stanzas 1 to 5 now and 6 and 7 at the end of the service. that I speak to your Lord and all the thoughts of our hearts and our minds be pleasing in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. An often asked question in many homes, maybe even in yours, if you say it to yourself, where are my keys? When my brother first went to high school, he lived in a dormitory. Of course, he had a key to get in your room and this was back in the late 80s. Somebody, I don't know who it was, bought him this keychain. It wasn't really little, it was kind of a big one. And it was a keychain that if you lost your keys, you could whistle. And it would beep. So you could find your keys. And so, as long as you were in close proximity to the lost keys, you usually could find them. But when you think of it, it really didn't function all that well. You had to whistle just right for it to beep, and you can only imagine as a freshman in high school looking for lost keys going around the dorms of MLS whistling. Some people 
may think you're doing something a little crazy. Now they have that, that little card that's called a tile. And if you have a smartphone, you can find your lost keys. Two weeks ago, in a couple chapters previous in St. Matthew's Gospel, when the Apostle Peter gave his brilliant confession as Jesus' his only Savior, Jesus handed the keys to the church. And we learned the keys in the Catechism and what the keys are all about. It's the power to forgive sins. And in the Gospel we just heard, Jesus hands the keys over again. But this time, he now demonstrates how the keys are going to be used amongst God's people. Now we know how driving is a great responsibility, perhaps even a greater responsibility here on the mean streets of Waukesha. The keys that God has given us, that Jesus has given us to forgive sins, is a far greater and more solemn responsibility. And this is not a situation where the Lord tosses us the keys and we toss them to the next person and say, nope, your turn to drive. Because I don't want to right now. We may be inclined to do that. Because isn't it crazy to think that we would be the ones to show a person their sin and to speak God's forgiveness to them? Crazy, isn't it? Just as crazy, I think, as the picture that Jesus uses right before our gospel lesson, one we alluded to in the hymn we just sang. Jesus says, talks about the crazy shepherd. He's got a hundred sheep, 99 cute, beautiful, little fluffy sheep that are always perfectly obedient and one. What does the crazy shepherd do? He leaves the cute, fluffy, beautiful 99 sheep that don't do anything wrong to go after the one sheep who has lost and has left him. That's crazy. And yes, for us to use the keys is crazy just like our Lord. So Jesus demonstrates how we're going to use the keys. You may think initially that it's a foolish thing to do. It's a waste of human time. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but when the Lord gives us these keys, we understand the solemn responsibility he has given us because we understand the nature of sin. And it's especially poignant in this situation because the Lord is setting up a situation in which we have a person that knows better. We have a fellow brother or sister in Christ and we can picture these people in our mind and they may even be a part of our family who are caught in sin. And what kind of sin is it? We are talking of the most serious nature here, aren't we? One who is absolutely lost in sin. A person that ought to know better. Because this person knows what sin is and they know what they are doing is sinful. And although, although they are told that, then they continue in this sin again and again and again. To the point where Jesus says at the end of it all, what we have on our hands is unbelief. A person who persists in sin in such a way and says, I know it's sin, I don't care that it's sin, is a person who is saying, in other words, I don't need Jesus' forgiveness. And then we realize how serious this is. Such sin destroys faith and is damning. And when we realize that, that is when our hearts open up. When Jesus demonstrates the forgiveness of sins, we look at these people and we see the faces in our minds and we, we love. With a crazy love. Like that shepherd's love that goes after that lost sheep. And so we could call this tough love, right? 
It's a love that is shown often in our earthly life. Love that does what is necessary, that's not going to be pleasant. It's a love that often happens between parents and children. And then reverse older in life, parents need this, for, or children need this for their parents to make difficult choices and decisions. And why this kind of love? Because love is not going to stand by and watch a fellow Christian kill their faith to death and head straight down the highway to hell. And as Jesus demonstrates the forgiveness and how this will work in our life, we also know how much patience it will take to do such a loving thing. What Jesus demonstrates for us isn't just a simple one, two, three process and here we go, we're out. We also know then how love and patience is going to carry itself out in doing this, don't we? That we don't seek to show ourselves and prove ourselves to be right. We're not going to lord it over another person. We're going to see the deadly nature of their sin and not try to humiliate them or intimidate them or to drive them away from us. And yet we still are serious about sin. We do not minimize it. We do always take it seriously. So then we have now a million and one reasons why this isn't the thing for me to do. The excuses come flooding in, don't they? How could I, a sinner, possibly be the one who goes and shows someone their sin? Maybe we can find somebody who's not a sinner. Certainly they can do it better. And yet no such person exists. Notice to whom Jesus gives these keys. The power to forgive sin. We saw that play out in the second lesson too, right? You had, you had Paul. And what did Paul call himself? The chief of sinners. And yet, what did he have to do when Peter was clearly wrong? Show Peter his sin. Excuses flood our hearts and our minds. We may think that the whole thing is just going to be a big waste of time. And we're not going to be able to change anything anyways. They're not going to listen to me. I don't know what to do, what to say. Then we realize that any excuse that we might make to not do what Jesus demonstrates for us here is a complete lack of love. So how can we do this? We could ask the question a different way. Why does the Lord give us the keys? We have no desire to seek and to bring forgiveness to a brother or sister who is sinning if we don't know for ourselves what the forgiveness of sin the forgiveness of sins is. How many of you, as we saying, Jesus sinners does receive, we're thinking about somebody else? You were thinking about yourself. You know how the forgiveness of sins has worked for you and in your heart, in your lives, for the excuses we have made in getting ourselves out of doing what Jesus wants us to do. What, what are we doing? We're taking the easy way out, right? If we say, no, there's a, there's a better sinner than I that should be doing this. And yet we realize for our sin, what did Jesus do for me? Did Jesus take the easy way out for my sin? Did he say, well, there's somebody better that can do this for you? No, he came down from heaven just as he shows us in the keys, doesn't he? Where has forgiveness come from? But from heaven. And as we speak the words of forgiveness, what is really going on here? But as our voice speaks those words of forgiveness here in time and space, that forgiveness echoes through the halls of heaven because 
Jesus didn't take the easy way out for sinners. He came down from heaven and lived daily perfectly where I daily sin. He didn't take the easy way out. We heard it last week, didn't we? He told them again and again and again. I'm going to the cross. I know it. I must. So who better to forgive sin? The one who doesn't sin? Or the one who knows what the forgiveness of sins really is? The one to whom the forgiveness of sins have come down from heaven again and again and fills your hearts. And we know where we, we hear this forgiveness, don't we? I, not a service hardly goes by where you don't hear it, right? I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit as I speak those words to you. They echo through the halls of heaven and sin is let go before God. We know the forgiveness of sins. We come to the Lord's table. This is exactly what he places into our hands and upon our lips. We know this for ourselves. So no, there is no one better to share forgiveness than the one who has forgiveness. That's why Jesus gives the keys to you to forgive sins. And we realize that while Jesus has power to calm seas, he puts into our mouths a far greater power to forgive sins. And so we come back to that question, how can I do this? We realize that the Lord has done it for us. And his love for us is what moves us even though we already love those around us, to love them to the extent of the forgiveness of sins. And we realize that the forgiveness of sins isn't only dispensed here in God's house or in pastor's office. Because you only see me a little bit during the week. And just ask for yourself, who do you sin against more in your life and who sins against you? most in life and then ask where is the forgiveness going to be done and used more here or in your life and so we take this power to forgive against those we sin against the most and who sin against us the most our parents our spouses our children our friends our neighbors our family those we are around the most are those that we will sin against the most and will sin against us the most and to realize what happens each and every time we speak the forgiveness of sins to these people. That those words echo through the halls of heaven. And we realize what's at stake because Jesus has shown us how desperately needed forgiveness is because of sin. And he has shown us how this forgiveness happens in our lives. So Jesus says to us, Here are the keys. Go forgive sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Amen. With one heart and voice, let us confess our faith in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus our Lord and for all people according to their needs. Eternal Lord, you speak to us in words of love and light and power. Fill us with peace today. As we ponder the good news that you forgive our sins in Christ. Guide our lives today as we see clearly the path you have laid out for us. Work in us today through your spirit that our thoughts, words, and actions glorify you and serve our neighbor. Fill us with the word we have heard today and move us to believe it and live it. Provide courage and compassion to all who preach and teach your word. Take away their fear of criticism and contention and make them bold to say what you say. Fill them with a love like yours and lead them to announce the forgiveness of sins as your free gift to us and all people. Move us to love all ministers of the word wherever they serve. Forgive us for the times we hear your word but fail to live it in our lives. Break down the apathy that lurks in us and leads us to ignore eternal realities. Convict us with your law and then fill us so full of your gospel that we overflow with zeal to do your will. Give us thankful hearts to live and love with joy. Guard and guide us as we live in a society that despises what you say about marriage. Lead husbands and wives to love each other with commitment, respect, and patience. Move parents to grasp the eternal value of keeping their children close to Jesus even when their children grow up. Protect us from the evil that surrounds us. Give us pure hearts and minds. Provide your divine compass for those who govern us by making laws and setting policies. Give us respect for those who protect us from crime and aggression. Lead us to value the rights of our fellow citizens and to care for those who cannot care for themselves. Bless our land with peace and prosperity so that the gospel may be proclaimed to all. Give us passion to share the story of your love with our family and friends. Overcome unbelief and open the hearts of people everywhere to believe the good news that Jesus has forgiven their sins and open the gates of heaven. Fill us with joy over every sinner who repents and comes to trust in your grace. Extend your healing power to those who are sick and suffering in body or mind. Fill eager minds with wisdom to discover new ways to treat disease and illness. Give patience and compassion to those who care for the sick and dying. Lift the eyes of the dying to your loving Christ. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. Eternal Lord, you guide the world with your mighty power and love all people because your Son lived and died and rose again. Hear our prayers, spoken and in silence, and answer them in your wisdom and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right for to do. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord. Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who promised that wherever two or three come together in his name, there he is with them to shepherd his flock till he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. are you, Lord God, eternal King and gracious Father. In love you made us the crown of your creation. In mercy you planned our salvation. In grace you sent your Son to redeem us from sin. We remember and give you thanks that your eternal Son, Jesus Christ, became flesh and made his dwelling among us. That he willingly placed himself under law to redeem those under law. That he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death on a cross. That he has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Bless us as we receive your Son's body and blood in the sacrament. Forgive our sins, increase our faith, strengthen our fellowship, and deepen our longing for the day when Christ will welcome us to his eternal feast. Praise and thanks and honor and glory be to you, O God our Father, and to your Son, and to the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
blood of Christ shed for you. The 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 The true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in Christian faith until life everlasting. Go in peace. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus. Blood of Christ shed for you. The 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 true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in Christian faith until life everlasting. Sins are forgiven in Jesus. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. 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 The true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in Christian faith until life everlasting. Go in peace. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Christ shed for you. The blood of 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 Christ shed for you. True body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in Christian faith until life everlasting. Go in peace. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. 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 True body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in Christian faith until life everlasting. Go in peace. Your sins are forgiven in Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Please stand. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His mercy endures forever. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet that you have given us to eat and to drink in this sacrament. Through this gift you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your Spirit, help us to live as your holy people until that day 
when you'll receive us as your guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated. We sing stanzas six and seven of Jesus Sinners Does Receive.